Welcome, welcome everyone. So glad to have you with us tonight. Welcome to In the Kitchen with Workwell and Beautifully Fed Food. Great, so I will actually turn it over to Afia so that she can get us started. Afia, let me just get the spotlight on you. Great. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for your participation in the food demonstration tonight. This is Afia Bediaco with Workwell NYC, and we are working with Beautifully Fed, who are our partners for the demonstration tonight. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Workwell NYC and then pass it on to our leads. So Workwell NYC is the city's employee wellness initiative. We have several areas of focus in our efforts. In addition to food focus efforts in our Eat Well programming, we also have a mental health and well-being area where we have meditation classes and supports in that area. In addition, our take care portion includes preventative health. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Move More is our area where we focus on physical activity. And there are a variety of fitness classes that are available remotely or virtual fitness classes. And we invite you to stay in touch with WorkWell NYC. The invitation that you got today or the way that you were in touch to register for this program is the best way to sort of keep in touch. And we will continue to make these sorts of offerings available to you. So thank you for being here and I'll pass it on to our team at Beautifully Fed. Fantastic. Hello everybody. We're so glad you're here for week four of In the Kitchen with Work Well, NYC and Beautifully Fed Food. I'm Karen Joseph Sherfies. I'll be your chef for this evening. And I want to tell you a little bit about Beautifully Fed Food and um, introduce you to my partner Fiona who will tell you a little bit more about herself. So Beautifully Fed Food is a collective, a woman-led collective of black and brown people from the African and Latin American diasporas. We're trained in culinary arts, nutrition, and food justice. Um, our mission is to encourage people to celebrate their cultures, honor the wisdom of their bodies, and the traditions of their ancestors through food, one delicious bite at a time. Because if it doesn't taste good, it really doesn't matter. Um, and we do this through the culinary and food justice demos, classes, and workshops that we teach. And Fiona is here as my sous, my sous chef for tonight. Fiona, why don't you say hi? Hi, everybody. Welcome again. So glad to have you cooking with us this evening. I am Fiona, a member of the Beautifully Fed team, as Karen mentioned. As many times as I say that, I stumble over beautifully every single time I say it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm so glad to be here with all of you this evening. I am a home cook, a trained community chef, and a fitness instructor. So I really believe in just bringing health and wellness to communities in the form of movement, as well as food that tastes good, as Karen said. So I am sure that you are going to enjoy this evening's corn cake and peach salsa. And I'm going to turn it back over to Karen. Fantastic. All right, folks, we're going to get started. So I'm going to walk you through. You have to see the ingredients and supplies on your screen. Um, you can leave that there for a little bit while I walk us through them. We're going to start with making the salsa first. And if you have the recipe, please forgive me. I just noticed that it, I don't provide the instructions for the salsa, but know that it's simply an assembly of all the salsa ingredients. We're just going to put everything in one bowl and mix it up. Quite simple. So you're not missing a whole lot and you get to watch me do it. Um, so we have for the salsa, we have garlic, many cloves as you like. <laughs> I say four. I'll probably be using more than that. Um, we also have a pepper, a bell pepper. I have a lime. I'm not sure how juicy it is, so I have a second one. Two tomatoes. Um, one of them is already in my bowl. Cilantro, which I love to season this with. Um, I've also used basil in the past. Um, fresh thyme works well. I need uh, herb that you really enjoy using, I encourage you to use here. And what else I have? So I've already cut up. So I didn't find, so the, the theme of today's class is called In the Pantry, right? Um, it's about 
what's in your pantry, how to best stock it with things that are good for you. And um, I know during quarantine, a lot of us are, you know, still going grocery shopping, thank goodness, it's still accessible to us and has things in it that we need, but we try to minimize how often we go out, right? And fresh food spoils quickly. Um, so I was focusing on canned ingredients. And the thing to think about when you're cooking with canned ingredients is you really wanna read the labels and make sure, particularly if it's canned fruit, that you're getting fruit that's stored in its own juice and its natural juices, not added juices, not added syrup, heavy syrup, says heavy syrup, run the other way, um, and so on. So I went looking for canned peaches today in the supermarket, I, I didn't have any more in my pantry. And the canned ingredient said, peaches followed by water sugar and high fructose corn syrup i quickly put that can away and they, they didn't have any other offerings like that was the only brand some something with an a i don't even know um so i picked up some fresh peaches instead so that's my point i've got fresh peaches here we also have tomatoes um once we already cut up um i forgot that the recipe called for a red onion and it wasn't until i got here and i was assembling things i was like you know what would be really good in this salsa a red onion and then I started to look at the ingredients and look at that. It calls for a red onion. I just don't have any. So what I'm going to do is um, supplement it with some green onions. Did it already call for green onions? It did not. So we're just going to add green onions are um, called for in the, in the corn cakes that we're going to make. So I'm simply going to add some extra green onion from that to this and voila. Okay. So we're going to start with this, with the salsa first. I'm going to move this out the way so I can show you what we have in place for the corn cake. So um, I already started my dry ingredients. We've got cornmeal, flour, um, some baking, I always forget, so I have to look, baking powder. We also have, were you able to see it here? Baking powder, yep, baking powder. We also have salt, pepper, a little bit of red pepper flakes because I like a spice. And then for our wet ingredients, we have, I'm not going to show you everything, but we have the yogurt, um, eggs, four eggs it calls for. Um, what else, Fiona? Scallions, corn, and a little bit of olive oil. I think those are all the ingredients. Do I, does anybody have any questions about ingredients or need some substitutions? Who's cooking with us tonight? That would be good to know. Yeah, let us know. Are you cooking with us tonight? I see we've got some shy folks who don't have their cameras on, but you can always chat us and let us know if you're cooking with us or you can unmute yourself and let us know. Yeah, unmute yourself and show your video if you wanted to talk with us. That would be great. Not required. <laughs> I love that. Great. I love that Thea is getting a little bit of a workout in while she's doing this. <laughs> Amazing. So you're not cooking with us, but you're still doing something really great for your body right now. I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Please keep your body moving during these times. Yeah. Movement is important. <laughs> so folks, just so you know what I'm doing in the, in the recipe, for the salsa, though it doesn't have instructions, it does tell you what the ingredients are. And in the ingredients, it tells you how the ingredients should be prepped. So you should know, I always wash everything ahead of time. I can, um, my canned veggies, I make sure to rinse it well with cold water. Rinsing it takes out at least like anywhere from 40 to 70 percent of the salt can be removed. The additional salt that's added can be removed when you rinse it. That's really important, but it's also important to wash your veggies as well and your fruit. So I've done that. Oh, oh camera, be easy. Um, bad garlic. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm prepping my ingredients. So my ingredients call for minced garlic. So I'm going to mince a couple of cloves here. I'm going to smash. I'm going to see if I get my whole body into this. Hold on. So by uh, the way, do. Imani is cooking with us tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great way to, you know, release any frustration you may have had in the days by <laughs> crushing these garlics. But so Imani is cooking with us tonight. So we'll be checking in with you every so often, Imani, to see how it's coming along. Definitely. Yay, Imani. Welcome. So excited. Has anybody on the line, whether you've cooked with us, whether you're cooking with us tonight or not, has anybody here made their own salsa before? Share with us your experience. We could 
unmute you or you can unmute yourself to chat with we us. Also, we yeah. also have Olga on the line who made the quesadillas and love them. Yay, Olga. Fantastic. <laughs> Did you make um, a crema to go with it, a little yogurt dip situation? Or anything, or did you eat it all by itself? I did a version of it because it's only me. So everything you do, I have to make it smaller portions. I totally understand. My daughter's not trying to try anything. She's 21. <laughs> it's just, you know, whatever. But, um, <laughs> but I try more, it. More for it. you. Thank you. Uh, I'm so glad you, you enjoyed it. Thanks for sharing. Yes, yes. And thanks for cooking. Well, thanks for coming back again this evening. Yeah, even right. though you're Ooh. not cooking with us. Glad to have you. Yeah, I, well, I'm not cooking, but I'm here because I'm listening and I'm picking up all these little, uh, you know, these little yep. tips you have, like, like her, her crushing that. Her yeah, her <laughs> and it's it looks as though you you watch us and then you go home. You go home. You you then make it later. Yeah, I so do. You're not making it with us, you know, <clears> and I it. tweak it. <clears throat> I add a lot of cilantro. Oh, I love cilantro. Ugh, my favorite. Send us pictures, Olga. We okay, I will. Thank you, darling. All right, glad you're here. All right, so I'm mincing up my garlic. So, it's probably like three cloves. Talk to me. So John has made salsa, not with peach, but with mango, which sounds amazing. Oh, I have also amazing. made. Yeah, I have also yeah. made salsa with pineapples that I've had Ooh. with plantain chips. So good. Pineapple oh wow! Sauce I've never done that. Tea. That sounds mm -hmm. great. I've done mango with mango with me. I do um red onions and cilantro, and lots of garlic. I can't think what else I put in there, but those for sure. I've done that. I've done, I'm looking at this corn that's behind me. I've got my canned corn already rinsed and prepped. And as I was putting it into the bowl, and I already had my salsa ingredients measured, I was like. <gasps> This would be a great salsa with just the, with the corn and all this stuff. And it reminds mm -hmm. me of um, Trader Joe's has an amazing corn salsa that I go nuts for. Um, and I, I've been meaning to, to try to recreate that on my own without any of the junk in it. One day I will do that. Today is not that day, but it's fine. Um, all right, so I'm into my garlic. So this is what I do. I, can y'all see me? Yeah, I have my knife. Yeah. I got my, my fingers in a bear claw, and I'm just going down and making slices in it. Somebody asked us on a call the other day if we de-germ de de the, um, the, the garlic, which is to get off that green stem if it's, if it's grown, a green stem. Uh, yes, I do get rid of that. I don't, I don't know what that tastes like. I don't want to know what that tastes like, so I just get rid of it. Um, all right, so mashing, 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 and then sliding everything together. If I wanted to make it smaller, I sh I'll show you. I'll go through it all once more and mash some more. But right now, I'm just getting it all done. Oh, this garlic smells so good, you guys. You people, it smells delicious. Hi. Can I tell you that I, I felt so official when I learned how to cut in that way? You know the rocking motion of the knife. I was like, yeah. "Yes, I have arrived." You're I like, am now. <laughs> now I'm cooking, right? Now I'm cooking. yeah. Like, what was I doing before? I was fooling myself. Same Fiona. Same Fiona. And I have actually taken um knife knife skills courses before, like a class to learn how to get better with our knife skills. And now um, that we're part of Beautiful Fed Food, we teach knife skill courses. So if any of you want more training in the kitchen around nice skills let us know um personally i know getting more confident in the kitchen for me came from improving my knife skills like i just got it became so much easier to put dishes together when i was able to cut quickly and safely and not worry about things like the time i spent in the kitchen prepping was reduced nearly by half because i could i could do that so um, highly encourage it, highly recommend it, and we're available if anybody wants it for sure. All right, so I've got my garlic. I'm going to dice up my, my tomatoes. So this is a chef knife for tomatoes and other, like, softly fleshed veggies and fruits. I, this, is a red, this is a fruit. I use a serrated knife. And this is, I'm, I'm cooking in my, 
my friend, one, one of our other business partners, Anjaniki's Kitchen. And this is her knife. And I'm not really sure what the tip is for. And she's not looking at me. She, she can't tell me. But if anybody knows, what, what is that about? I've never seen that. But anyway, it has it. But what, why I picked this knife is because it has this, the serrated edges. And this allows you to tear through the tomato. Um, so I'm going to cut it in half. And so it just cuts a lot easier. I am a person who likes the seeds of the tomato. I like the juiciness that it gives. It'll add more juice to the salsa. So I keep that. But if you did not like the seeds, you're welcome to remove it at this point. And I'm just going to slice, slice slice so slice. Thea posted in the chat and I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly but she posted in the chat that she thinks it's for fish and then Athea says for deveining ah okay. thank you people that'll do it that makes a lot of sense cool so I cut that's what I love about these cooking classes is that Ooh. we all have so much knowledge and wisdom right. that we bring to the table to share yeah that's what it's all about all right, so I'm cutting up my tomatoes to add to this situation. And here, I want everything roughly the same size, just so that of every biteful or spoonful of salsa, I kind of get the same experience with each bite. Um, it's not as critical that everything be uniform. Um, we're not cooking anything. When you're cooking, it's really important when you can to make things uniform so that everything cooks at the same speed um, when you're cooking. Otherwise, you're gonna have some ingredients that are well cooked and then others that are may still be raw, <laughs> depending on how big your slices are. So be mindful when you're cooking. Here, we're just doing a rough chop situation. So la 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 la. You know, Karen, I wanted, I wanted to mention something when you were talking about the peaches. Um, Please. I tend to, go toward frozen and I have found that I you know I'll do smoothies and different things with frozen fruit and I think that you might have a better Mark. chance of finding just the plain frozen peaches or just the plain peaches if you look in the, the freezer aisle. That's so smart. I wasn't even thinking about the freezer today, but yeah that would have been a really great alternative to um to finding fruit when I did I was so I, was, I think I was more stunned than anything. I was like, wait, really? The only one brand of peaches is wrong with people. <laughs> and I just, I just wanted to get out of that door very quickly because I didn't trust them. But um, uh, yeah, no, frozen is a really great option, both for, for fresh and for fresh, both for veggies and for fruit. All right, so I'm dicing up my, um, my peaches. Folks, who, who is it that's cooking with us? What's your name, Fiona? Imani. Did anybody else Imani decide to cook? Imani, tell us, where are you in your process? How are things going? Can we spotlight you? And do you have all the ingredients? Do you need to sub anything? Quiet group tonight. Y'all are quiet. What's going on? I'm taking, I wish I had frozen peaches. That would be really Imani good. let us know that she's still cutting her produce. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So I'm cutting, so am I, Imani. You and me both. All right, so I've got my peaches. These are white peaches. They're really pretty. I tasted one earlier too. It's nice and sweet. Um, and I'll repost the recipe again. It's going to be in the chat, but as we get more messages, it'll scroll up so i'll just keep reposting it in case you'd like to link to it yay oh yeah do that hopefully it's helpful <laughs> to you um it's okay Aww. so once i do this i'm going to show i'm really excited to show you a cool technique that i just learned on how to <laughs> slice a bell pepper and why i'm really excited about it is because when i was taking um you know, culinary nutrition courses, I learned a lot of culinary techniques and cooking and really fancy ones and ones for slicing peppers. And it's very like technical and involved and you got to be very precise and did it. And I didn't want any parts of it. Like I did it for the class and then I quickly forgot how to do it because I wasn't, I knew I was going to apply that in my life. The thing about me is I like fancy things. Like I like to be fancy. Fancy is important to me. Um, but I like my fancy to be effortless. I don't want to have to work for fancy. So when I came across this 
uh, technique where it's like you get a, it's a, a fancy experience because you get to look like a pro when you're dealing with the produce but it's like really minimal effort i'm like this is a technique for me and this is something that i can teach other people to do so wait till i show you what that's all about it's so fun and basically what it is, is building now that you've mentioned I know, this it's not it's not what is a technique <laughs> and you're, you're gonna see like that just that like it's that simple but it's <laughs> such that so the technique that i learned in school was one where you take it's like one cutting motion where you're cutting all around because the whole, the whole point in cutting a bell pepper is you want to avoid the seeds right um and so they teach you this technique in culinary school where you take your knife and you cut it so that you you're cutting like it becomes Karen, one can you piece. lower can okay. you lower yeah great yeah. so you're cutting it so it becomes one piece and you're just cutting all the way around but you got to be really delicate with your knife and cut so that you don't cut through it all the way and it becomes the whole thing so this is the way that achieves the same result where the the seeds are intact and aren't interfering with with what you've cut and you still have all the the veggies and none of the white parts either so what you do is you take off the top and then you put it down like so and then all you're doing is you know that the core is like right in the center here right so you're just going to cut away from the core you're going to cut down and you see you got that there you're going to cut down here you're going to cut all the way around put all the way around and it all stays look at that it all stays right there and then you've got most if i was more delicate i'd have less of this this white stuff and my culinary programs they were all very particular about getting rid of all the white stuff I could care less. Like, it's fine. I, I eat it. It's not a problem for me. Um, but again, if you if it bothers you, get rid of it. If you don't like these little seeds, get rid of that. But now you've got these easy and easy. And now you can cut them into planks and then cut them off. I just, you know, we're done. Okay. Pepper done. So now this is what we're going to do. So we're going to cut them. I like to cut it this way down and create what I call planks or just like thin strips. easy right and then you put them all back together like so you can see and then you go down one more voila okay and you get them out of your way and cuts, say it again marisa's gonna take that tip the next time she's cutting peppers right it's so simple a lot less stress and now if i wanted to so that, now this is like a medium or large dice. Now, if I wanted to mince that up some more, just cut it up some more, rough chop. I just bring them all together and cut like this. And don't go crazy about it. Ta-da! What do you think? Who else is going to try to do that? Yay, Marissa, you got to show us how it comes out for you how, or tell us how, how it feels. I'm not going to come along tonight, but um, I will report back. <laughs> yeah, report back. <laughs> Excited. And I actually can report back two weeks later. I made the granola this weekend, and it was delicious. Yay! Oh, Fantastic. So good. What, did, what did you add to your granola? Did you make it exactly as the recipe called for? Um, I added vanilla, like you did. Oh, yay. Uh, and I used raisins and walnuts, because it was the only nuts and dried fruit that I had in my house. But it came oh, out really perfect. good. Oh, perfect. Look at that. So glad you made it, honey. Thanks for reporting that. Of course. Fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to keep going with my peppers. I'm going to cut through a little bit smaller this time so I don't have to do a whole lot more chopping. So we could be done with this portion because I'm ready to make the corn cakes. I'm so excited about these corn cakes. They're going to be so yummy. It'll be great to layer with the peaches. You could probably do this with other fruit. Well, yeah, we talked about doing a mango salsa. A pineapple, pineapple salsa, salsa. Yeah. really appeals to me. What did you eat that with, Fiona? With plants and chips. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Did you make it plants and chips plant. yourself, or you bought those? Those I bought that time around, but I, you know, since I've been at home, I've been making everything from scratch. So I should add that one to my list. Yeah. Yeah. So I made plants. So, and chips. Karen, do you Trust know me. about how many servings this recipe would be? What it, it's not on the thing. I think it says it serves six. 
Yep. About six. Oh, actually, yeah, six oh. servings. My bad. Six. And we'd love to see your bowl when you add this final bit of pepper, because I can yeah. just see all the colors coming together. Right. We'd love to see that. Yeah. Voila. There. Well, I do like this. And cut the last peppers. Perfect. And then what's next is um, the lime. I'm going to add some of the lime juice. And then I'm going to taste it. A little bit of salt, pepper, taste it. And then I also happen to have some, um, I think the recipe calls for a pepper, like a pimento pepper or a scotch bonnet, but really little scotch bonnet if you have scotch bonnet. I've got a pimento pepper I'm going to add. I also have um, a piece of ginger that I brought from home that I thought might be really good in this. Um, so I'm gonna add that as well. All right, so we've got this, we've got this. All right, all right, all right. Let's get more. Time to add my lime. I always forget which way to cut the lime so that thing, I think it's this way. Voila, so yeah, you want the ends to be at either side, left and right. You want the ends so that you have it cut like that as opposed to cutting it lengthwise. Sometimes when it's so perfectly round, it's hard to see what's lengthwise versus what's horizontal. And it looks different when you cut it horizontal. And I like it to look like that. It also makes it easier to, to juice. So if I didn't have my handy juicer, I would have rolled this around the line to um, help soften it and release the juices. But since I have my juicer, I don't have to do that, and I can just do this and let the juicer do all the work. Ta-da! So I'm doing that. So I'm taking one lemon. Is there's a, a, a man who registered for this class who is so helpful to me. His name is Randall. Randall, are you on today? You said you were going to join. Say hi if you if you're on. I say he's helpful because he he really was paying attention to the rest of you all. And he caught a number of things that w weren't clear, like how much flour should we use and so forth. And so um, I was able to make some adjustments before we sent out the final recipe today. And that uh, was super helpful. So I wanted to thank, thank you, Randall, if you're here. And I hope you're cooking with us. Do you see that him? was me, yes. Yay. Hey, I can't see you. I know. I have my um. My camera off. <laughs> okay, that's all on purpose. I get that. Thank you, Randall. See You're you. welcome. Beautiful. Are you cooking today? I am cooking, but I'm a little slow in the kitchen, so I probably wouldn't be a good person to spotlight. Um, I have been cooking with you guys the whole time. I'm the one who, remember you guys at the parfait and the first batch of strawberries, I burned them? Oh, that was oh, you! Yeah. Yes, yeah, that, that's me. I'm, I've been with you guys the whole time. The, the whole recipes time. come out great eventually. I just, <laughs> I'm a little slow. I'm a little it slow. Is, <laughs> it is okay, honey. Take whatever time you need, and we will spot you at whatever station you're at, whatever stage it's helpful for other folks, because we're all at where we're at, right? It doesn't really matter. So, no, please, we'd love to, to, um, to see what's going on and support you in any way. And thank you for keep coming back. That's wonderful. Yeah, Yay, Randall. Karen, we have a couple questions in the chat. So okay. can you talk a little bit more about Scotch Bonnet Pepper? Because some folks haven't heard of this. Those who are from the Caribbean probably are very well, you know, familiar with <laughs> Scotch Bonnet Pepper. Right. Um, and then can you use any other juice? Because lime isn't necessarily the best option for some. Oh yeah, no, lemon juice, you could use um, any acid you happen to have at home for cooking, apple cider vinegar would work well, white wine vinegar, if this is an adult situation, you could even just choose white wine <laughs> um, alone, so yeah, you've got, you've got options here. I wonder what a balsamic vinegar might do to this, that could be a lot of fun too. So yeah, you can totally play around with it, don't feel like you've got to... You use. say that. Oh. I think that a white balsamic vinegar could be interesting. Balsamic vinegar could be interesting. Right? Have you ever tried white? I love using white I love my balsamic, balsamic vinegar. I haven't used it in a long time. I kind of forgot about it. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to have to go get some. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. I know. Okay, 
So. And don't forget, don't forget to talk to us about Scotch bonnet pepper. Oh, Scotch bonnet. Okay, okay. I can tell you about that right now. So Scotch bonnet pepper is a this type of habanero pepper. It's really spicy. It's spicier than a um, jalapeno pepper. There's a scale that rates the level of spice in peppers. Who knows what it's called? The scale that rates peppers. Anyway, it's, it's up there. It's not quite as hot as Oville. What's it called? Scoville, I think. Or co something like that. Somethingville. In any event. Or, yeah, something like that. Uh, it, so it's, it's up there. It's like, um, I can't remember the number, but it's, it's high. It's really, it's really spicy. It's really delicious. It also, even without the spice, comes like a lot of these habanero peppers. The spice is held within the seeds. Um, I'm being careful here as I mix. Really quickly, I want to show you so I don't bruise my peaches, but I want everything to be well combined. So I'm going to taste really quickly. But um, the spice is held it within the seeds. So if you want to moderate how much spice, how much heat you're adding to your dish, you um, remove the seeds or only add a little bit of seeds. What I learned, um, as it, so I grew up eating it, you know, in most foods, whatever. Really good, loved it, loved spicy things. Um, as an adult, though, I learned through my mother-in-law, who is from Haiti, she'd cook with bell pepper, and rather than cutting it like my mom would do and adding it to stews and things, she would keep it whole and add it to, um, like, add it to a pot of rice as the pot is cooking, and the bell pepper would infuse its flavor, not its heat, but its flavor into the rice or into the stew, and that through her cooking and tasting bell, um, scotch bonnet pepper in that way, I discovered that it has a really lovely flavor, a flavor all its own that's separate from the heat component. And so now I, I do both. I, I cut it up for the heat and for the spice, and I, um, and I just like put it in stuff to infuse the, the flavor of the scotch bonnet. It's really beautiful, really nice. I highly recommend it. And, don't, and you don't want, you want to be very careful when cutting <laughs> scotch bonnet pepper. You don't want to be touching your eyes or anything, any orifices. Like, no, wash, wash your hands. Like, be very careful. And um, don't, don't try to eat it. Trust me. I had a friend who wasn't very nice when I was growing up, and she dared me to eat a scotch bonnet pepper. And I knew that I grew up eating scotch bonnet pepper in food. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can handle this. I can eat this. No, you can't. It was very <laughs> I took one bite and like my, my whole body was on fire for lots of time afterwards. Anyway. She wasn't so is our salsa all ready to go, Karen? I think so. I'm going to taste it now. I'm done mixing it up. Let me taste. Let me taste. Mm. Mm. It's okay. Let's see your face one more time. How is it? Are you doing the dance? I'm doing a dance. You're doing the dance? Okay. So yeah. that means that it's tasting good. So let's it's come back good. to... I need a little bit more salt. Bowl. And I'm going to add a little more red pepper flakes, more heat. Oh, you know what I didn't add? I didn't add my ginger. Ginger also adds spice as well as other flavor. So I'm going to do that. I put that on the red one. There you are. This is a super chunky salsa. I I I like my um, ingredients to be a lot smaller. smaller. I think I yeah. I think I prefer a salsa that's almost like hmm, I don't saucy. Know how to describe the crimson. Yeah, kind of or saucy. Like sauce. Yeah. Yeah. I could go either way, but I, I like I like a chunky salsa, and I wanted this to be chunky specifically because we're going to be topping it on top of our corn salsa and I mm -hmm. wanted it to like have some body and, and stand up to it so you might notice I'm using a spoon to cut the ginger skin off because ginger skin is really soft and doesn't require a lot and if you try to use a knife to cut ginger which a lot of people do you're going to cut off a lot more flesh than you need to um huh I forgot to bring my microplane I wonder if my person has one at this point you can use a grater or a microplane to shave this. I can't seem to find either right now, so I'm gonna cut it up like really, talk about cutting really finely. I'm gonna cut this up really finely. And then we're gonna move on to, to making the corn cakes. And this, what will happen is this um, salsa would just sit and marinate in its flavors. 
and get even more yummy and tasty and the juices will settle. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait. Okay. Yeah, so. this is definitely one of those things that's much better the next day and then the next day and the next day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you have anything left the next day and the next day and the next day. Right. <laughs> if you're lucky, if you don't eat all the way through it, like I'm prone to do. Ooh, what I'm doing now is I'm mincing it because I actually like, I don't mind finding a piece of the ginger. I kind of like the, the taste of it. But if if you didn't, what you could what you could do, and what I'll do now to show you, you could squeeze, I could have sque squeezed that, um, the ginger that I just cut up and just squeezed it into my, into my bowl. And then I've got ginger juice and, and then I could just discard the solid pieces and be done with it. All right. So moving this out the way. Fiona, you want to check in on how folks are doing while I get my station ready for um for the corn cakes? Sure. So Imani, I'm gonna come back to you since you're cooking. I know that you said that you're, you know, just taking your time and enjoying the experience. How far are you along in in the recipe now? Have you been able to cut everything up for the salsa? Um, still cutting. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, oh, okay. no need to be sorry. Not at all. You know, I remember that the last time we were together, you were so stressed out about the strawberries. And so I was hoping that as we've been cooking together, it's become more of a, you know, an enjoyable experience we're not, where you're not stressing out so much about, about the little details. Because cooking yeah. is definitely, as we've said during previous classes, it's self-care, it's self-nurturing. And so... I hope that folks can really just take it in and enjoy the experience. Yeah. I, I share that. For me, my Sundays were dedicated, as I'm saying this out loud, I'm like, you just had one day dedicated to self-care? What is that about? But, <laughs> you know, my, my Sundays were all about being in the kitchen and cooking and having my wine and listening to music. So, you know, if that's not your cooking experience right now, I would encourage you to try it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. There you well, go. Well, I guess I'll say it's a good thing you guys said it, it's better the next day because that's probably when I'm going to be finished. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll be finished when you're finished and it will be fine. It will be um, I remember you guys told me to use the strawberries and like a vinaigrette or something for the salad. That did work, by the way. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That did. So I didn't have to throw them out. See, I told you never throw Amazing. out. Amazing. It, it's always salvageable, I think. Unless yeah. it's burnt to a first So let's, <laughs> while you're still preparing there, Karen, does anybody else have any kind of a cooking routine that you, you do where you just kind of kick back and it's just your thing, your way of relaxing while you cook? I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll check back in again. So Ava said that she actually made the peach salsa yesterday. No way. Yeah, so she's ready yes. for the corn cakes. Oh, so yours is nice and marinated. And Ooh, can, can we see it? See if she can show it to us on camera. Okay, so let me get my, hold on, let me what turn it on my light. light. And the variations. Okay, let's see Ava trying to find you. Okay. Oh, there you are, coming over to you. Oh, that looks Ooh, really that good. looks delicious. Oh, oh wow. Oh, that that looks, looks really good. Really, really good. <laughs> that looks so good. Mm. Peas, the tomatoes, the ripe, ripe, ripe peaches. Oh. I can, nice. I can eat that right now. Yum. Thank you for sharing. Those were, um, sorry. Those um, <laughs> peaches, the peaches I used were actually um, in a jar. Oh, sweet. Mm. From Trader Joe's. And I like, I grilled them a little bit. Mm. Ooh, nice. Oh. Even nice. added flavor. Yeah. yeah. I, I love, love cooking, y'all. You, you guys, you don't know. I love cooking. <laughs> oh, wow. You can tell. Oh. <laughs> That's by um, looking at the outcome. Thank you, honey. Please. Okay, thank you. And so wait, so wait, did, wait. I need to understand. What, what's your name? Who showed us the peaches for peach salsa? What's her name? Ava. Oh, Ava. Ava. Did 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 you did you just make that and let it sit in the fridge? Did you not eat that? Like, I need to understand how you didn't. Girl, <laughs> I ate this yesterday oh, with good. my Taco Tuesday. I had um, I had burritos. Mm -hmm. 
nice. with the peach salsa. So <laughs> look at and that. And I knew we were doing this today, so I wanted to. I, I was like, okay, let me just make mm-hmm. it. So now I'm ready. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. I love it. You're ready. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Cool beans. So what do I need? I'm, I'm getting my spatula rinsed off. And so I told you I had my dry ingredients set. Now I'm going to get my wet ingredients. So if you know, this is what I'm going to need you to remind me how much of what I'm putting in where. Okay, so you have two cups of yogurt. So for the yogurt, I'm using a dry measure. So look, okay, that's not how we do this. Hold on, guys. Hold on, people. Humans, okay. I want to see. So I'm going to go like that. Between that and what's on the side of it, that's about one cup. I get all that in here. Okay. Yes. Thick yogurt. I'm using um Baju's yogurt, which I like. It's a whole milk yogurt. And whole milk yogurt has about five percent milk fat. If it has any less than five percent milk fat, you're in like the skim yogurt, non fat yogurt zone. And we believe in full fat things here <laughs> typically when you take the fat out of stuff um food manufacturers they're 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 wise to the fact that fat tastes good and when they remove fat from their products they have to add in things to make it taste good again so they, they'll often add sugar um yeah. so we want to minimize how much added sugar is in our things our ingredients so we like to get the full fat item plus that is good for your your body needs it. Do you think that if Ava uses a vanilla bean yogurt, that that would affect the flavor? It will. It will definitely affect the flavor. Yeah, it, can still, yeah. it can still be good. Um, vanilla, you know, in my cornbread recipe, sometimes I'll add vanilla extract. So I think um, mm-hmm. this will be similar to that. It'll be just a savory, sweet situation, which is my favorite combination. Anyway, and it looks like my yogurt. Um, container had about two cups so we're just going to go ahead and empty had i known that i would have just emptied the whole thing that would have been helpful karen in any event we're going to do this so to my yogurt i'm adding what then four large eggs let's just polish off this tin which makes my job a lot easier we and see how thick this yogurt is i love it so yeah um Get the, use the vanilla now. However, I would love it. Whoever has the vanilla yogurt, who's that? Read your ingredients. I'm curious what's in it. Because again, that's what we're always encouraging folks to get in the habit of. Read your ingredient labels and see what they're putting in, in the products. My ingredients say grade A pasteurized milk and cream, live active yogurt cultures. And they named the live active yogurt cultures. And that's it. That's it. And that's all you want in your yogurt. Milk, cream, bacteria. The end. So what, what's in your vanilla yogurt? And again, this isn't about shaming. This is just about educating and being mindful for ourselves and one another. And realizing that the food companies, I, if anybody should be shamed, it's the food companies. <laughs> They've gotten away with so much foolishness try to make a buck there go okay let's look at where fresh so ava has an almond based yogurt Ooh, ooh, i love almond what's what does the ingredient say ava okay i'm gonna add my eggs four eggs okay One, two, three, four. Okay. I'm just gonna go right ahead and do that. And after the eggs, then what? Two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. 
eggshells all the way. So Ava's ingredients are sugar, cornstarch, locust bean, locust bean gum, vanilla beans, natural flavors, and live active cultures. Yeah. So what, what were the first three ingredients? Sugar. Mm -hmm. And what starch, else? Cornstarch. Corn starch, locust bean gum. Look at that. I don't, I don't even see the milk or the cream or anything that makes it yogurt in the first three ingredients. So the first ingredients in the ingredient label are the things that are present in the highest concentration. And so that's not yogurt. And again, not, not shaming anybody but the food manufacturers because they, they're trying to pass that off as, as yogurt, as real food. When in fact, it's, it's you know, something that tastes probably really good. Um, yeah, I think that tends to, that tends to happen with some of the non-dairy beverages uh -huh. and yogurts and things like that. Because she mentioned that it's an almond base. Got you. Yeah, mm -hmm. they know we're we're on a quest to be healthy, and they know we're looking for you know buzz terms on the front of the packaging, but they sometimes get away with murder in the actual ingredients itself. So I was using my spatula, that wasn't working. I need my whisk, so I'm doing this. All right, and now I need my tablespoon of olive oil. Two too tablespoons of olive oil. I used to have tablespoons. We're gonna eyeball it. All right, I'm gonna do what I often tell folks not to do. This is a tablespoon for eating with, but this isn't a tablespoon for measuring with. But hold on, I like, and I'll, I'll I can show you so, right now why. So Karen, you you were first beating the yogurt and the eggs together. Do you need to do that before you add the other ingredients? Um, or no, can you? you know, I could I could I could beat it all at the same time. So this is me okay. wanting to show you. This is an actual tablespoon. This is a what we call a tablespoon that we eat with, and just to see like what's the actual. So it's it's all right. It'll do. It's okay for a liquid measure for a dry measure i'd be more more inclined to use this because you get to like really level it off and make sure everything that's inside the the scoop um is what goes into your bowl so anyway that was just me to show you so karen you were adding two tablespoons of oil to that there goes my second got your second great thank you See, everybody needs a Fiona in the kitchen. <laughs> See, weren't there? I might, I might have forgotten that. Mwah. So, okay. Yeah, I'm splashing all over the place, y'all. Try to get this done. My fire is on. We're just about ready. What happens next, Jake? Yogurt, eggs, oil, and then you are going to add your yogurt mixture along with the corn, the green onions, and the pepper to the flour mixture. Okay. So, now I'm going to bring my spatula back. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to, I'm going to add in my corn to this. Oh, I feel like I should mix these first and then fold in the ingredients. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this in first. So I'm adding this. I want you all in there. And I'm using yogurt, um, but I've also seen this recipe with milk, to use coconut milk. I like the consistency of yogurt and I try to stay away from dairy um, products, but somehow, like again, I think we've talked about this before, that um, you know everybody is different and how food reacts to each person is gonna differ depending on, on your own body and what's going on with you. And um, similarly, I was on a path to like get rid of dairy in my diet because it was really um, causing all kinds of gastric distress, stomach issues, cramping, like all this stuff. And so I got rid, you know, I was like phasing it out. 
and hold on, I want to turn my fire down really low until I'm ready. Um, and I was doing really well, and I realized, like, for a while, I would experience cramps, particularly around my cycle, and um, didn't know that my diet could help to mitigate that. And when I um, finally started uh, making adjustments to dairy and like not eating it as much, I noticed that the cramping like literally went away. My this is something I've been dealing with for decades. Um, anyway, then I decided, well, you know, this is okay. I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm not experiencing any di dietary distress, and I still like cheese. <laughs> And yogurt and things, let me try to add some things back and see how my body reacts. And I notice certain things, there's certain cheeses that I can eat without problem, ricotta cheese, goat cheese, I enjoy it. And yogurt is something I do. Look at how fluffy this is, y'all, with the yogurt. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm a little nervous. Nervous? <laughs> oh, oh, did I say nervous? Yes, a little nervous. Because um, it's not as thick as I was expecting, as I remember doing it the first time, um, to actually sit into the pan and be like cake-like. I think that yogurt did something to make it really like, it's fluffy. I don't know, this, we're, we're gonna see, it's gonna be an experiment. It might not be quite a cake. <laughs> it might be, the, might be a little fluffy dumpling situation. I don't know, but I'm, I'm for it, I'm here. So I'm adding in the eggs. I'm adding in the scallions. So you added the corn and the scallion and then the scotch bonnet pepper. Are you adding that here? Or did you already no, add it? I'm going to make pepper in here. Oh, it okay. smells amazing, y'all. So my salt is already in there from before. Oh, wow. Just look at this. Can you see this? Do you see this? Mm -hmm. It looks really good. Okay, okay, okay. I do see it, and I have the same problem every week, which is that I never have time to eat before the <laughs> class. And then I <laughs> sit and I look at this, and I'm just starving. Um, is it better got, to use? <laughs> you. Is it better to use a fine cornmeal opposed to a coarse one, Karen? Yeah, you want to use a fine cornmeal here so that it's um, it works well with the flour. The flour is really fine. You don't want it to be too much of a contrast. You want it to blend well together. So yeah, fine cornmeal. Okay. So now that's everything, right? See? We're good. That is everything. We have the okay. flour, cornmeal, baking powder, salt, black pepper, sober, egg, oil, corn, onion, pepper. And we are ready. Ooh, the roll. pepper. We said pepper, but I, I didn't add the pepper. Let me add a little bit of my pepper to this. Where'd you go? I'm gonna cut up a little bit. And then it's time to start frying. So again, it's a lot. So this is a texture. It's a lot. It's it's thick. So maybe it'll hold up. It's a lot. Yeah, the corn helped to thicken it a little bit. When it was just the yogurt and the pow and the um and the flowers, it felt really loose. And I was worried that it wasn't going to hold together well, even with the eggs. But I'm a little, I feel a little better about it now that it's, it looks like it's holding by itself. It's holding a shape. Um, okay, I'm going to mince this up. Actually, I can use the whole, because this isn't a scotch bonnet pepper. It looks, scotch bonnet pepper looks similar to this. I should have showed it to you. And it looks really soft and soggy right now because it was in my freezer. And I took it out about an hour ago in preparation for this class. But typically, I freeze my my peppers um, whole and then use them and then take them out when I'm ready to, to cut them up just before it and it stays nice and firm and hard. I just cut them up frozen um, and it just, and it helps them last longer. It lasts like forever in the freezer. So there's that, okay. Um, but yeah, but you wanna use it right before, just as you take it out of the freezer. You don't wanna let it sit like I did here because then it just left with a soggy looking mess. Um, it's going to taste good. So, that? so you're going to be frying this over medium high heat. Yes. So let's get to going. I recently, I, I recently pickled some jalapenos because I, I ordered in groceries and I ended up with like so many more jalapenos than I expected. So okay. I pickled them and I enjoyed that so, so, so much. How did you pickle them? 
just I so you know it was my first time doing it so the recipe just said to boil them in I'm trying to remember if I boil them in vinegar I probably, I probably boiled them in some water and then added them to vinegar with garlic and and some salt but it was vinegar garlic salt it was so okay. simple. I mean, I saw lots of other recipes, but it was just so delicious. When I make pizza, I would add them on top of my pizza. Just any, when I made tuna, I would just have them in tuna. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds delicious. And it was easy to do? It was <laughs> super easy to do. Yeah. I think of pickling as something that's like advanced technique, next level. And I'm not there yet. <laughs> it's what I often tell myself. <laughs> So it's good to know. I might, we might try that. I've always wanted to yeah. pickle ginger. I love how bright pink mm, it becomes. Yes. Right? Yeah. I'm turning my fire up, y'all. Because I turned it down and then I forgot to turn it back up. So it's not making all the lovely cooking sounds. I'm accustomed to. I'm like, what's happening here? It's not a cold pan, which is not what you want. But it's, um, it's not a real hot pan yet either. So let's Give it a minute. But did you see I just dropped um, little dollops of, of um, my mixture into the pan and it's holding together beautifully. I thought it was about to be like a liquid puddle in the situation. I got very nervous yes. for all of them. They just reminded me, yes, I also added, I didn't use sugar. I think I used a little bit of honey in it. But yes, yeah, so Thea says for the pickled jalapenos, and I'm sure you can use this to pickle other things too. So a little sugar, vinegar, garlic, bay leaf, and peppercorn. Ooh. Yes. Did it change a color? Did it turn a funky color when you pickled the jalapeno? No, not at all. I only asked because I've seen um, pickled, not ginger. I want to pickle ginger, yes. But I've seen when you pickle red onions, it becomes mm -hmm. like really bright, like pink. It looks really pretty. I just wondered whether or not pickling changes the color and other things. I mean, the, so the jalapenos probably got a tad bit, like the color wasn't as bright. You know, yeah. the green dulled a little bit, but it wasn't, yeah. So Marisa said that she actually pickled some ginger a few weeks ago, but you haven't tried it yet. So are you just letting it kind of marinate? <laughs> we want to hear how it is next time we meet. Yeah. Yeah, this is verse. I honestly forgot it was there in the back of my head. <laughs> Until just now? <laughs> so glad I could remind you. You got to taste that thing and let us know how it is. That's key. Y'all people amaze me. I don't know how y'all can make something and then forget about it. Like, I, I'm eating the food immediately. I'm the same way about clothes shopping, though. I'll buy clothes, and I'm wearing it the minute I bought it. My mom would be like, if you act as if you had no clothes in the closet before you got home. Like, how, why is it you gotta wear that thing now? Because I, I bought it, I need to incorporate it into my wardrobe and see what else I could do. Same thing with food. I make it, I eat it, <laughs> and that's it, really just it. Karen, <laughs> Karen, can we see inside the pan? Oh yeah, okay. And we'll see you next time, Olga. Enjoy Zumba. <laughs> okay, got it, yeah. And so now I'm just going to look underneath to see, because you want it to get nice and golden. Ooh, like this. I'm going to show you. This is what you want it to look like. Yeah, what kind of oil are you frying this in, Karen? I'm using olive oil. Mm. I, I, I turned that one a little early. Can you see? Yeah. I want to get brown all around. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer for the others. And it's okay that the sides aren't quite cooked. We could always flip it back later. Um, but we're going to let this sit and not rush it. I'm going to taste what so came out <laughs> here. So, mmm, mmm, I like that. Savory. For making corn cakes. That was good. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Lucy, do you have a question? I see that you've raised your hand. Your hand. Your Zoom hand. There's so many. Lucy? Okay. So I want to mention that Esther shared um, a tip that in Indo-Chinese cooking, they use white vinegar 
they add green chilies, thinly sliced green chilies into white vinegar. And then they use that liquid into, they add that liquid into soups while eating. So the liquid, so I actually have a bunch of this vinegar sitting in my refrigerator and I was wondering what the heck I should do with it. What's I the name of the vinegar? Just, it's just the vinegar from the pickling that's left oh. over. And so um, Esther is mentioning that they would add that to soups while eating. Oh, wow. That sounds yum. And Maria is wondering why you decided to use olive oil instead of coconut oil. Um, it's what they have at the, at the house that I'm in right now. I would, I'd probably use coconut oil if I were at my house. I, um, also came across another oil. I haven't done my research on it yet to understand all the benefits of this oil and why the chef chose to use it, but, um, it's called safflower oil. Mm -hmm. um, some of you may be familiar. And, um, my friend was using it in her cooking class and she was explaining, actually, Maya, one of the, um, the chefs from Really Fed, Fed Food, she has a cooking class called The Soul of Cooking, where she lifts up um, Southern cooking, um, Afro Southern cooking. And she was, she did, we did buffalo cauliflower last night. So good, y'all. We fried it in safflower oil. And she said she adapted the recipe from um, another, well, a, a cookbook author, Sweet Potato Soul. You may be familiar with her. Um, Fiona, and she uses safflower flour oil, and, she, and my, I asked Maya why. So it's likely because it's, um, as a vegan, Sweet Potato Soul, um, the creator, is a vegan, and, um, you know, is looking, is always looking for, like, really good quality products that, um, you know, and, and oils especially that aren't, what you call it, aren't, um, you know, mass produced and it's not a corn oil or a um, canola oil, which we like to stay away from. And so she was looking at this as a better quality oil to use, utilize. And so anyway, I'm going to look into it, find out more, share with you and probably add it to my repertoire if I like it. I like the taste of it. It was great. I used it last night. I actually use that, I mean, totally off topic here, but I actually use safflower oil in my skincare. <laughs> oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> do, do tell. Are y'all seeing this? Mm-hmm. It's smelling amazing. Okay, please share about your skincare regimen with safflower oil. What does it do for your skin? What? So uh, I'll share in a bit. I'll keep us a little bit on topic because we have a question about canola oil and why you stay away from it. What You want to take that, Fiona? Why do you stay away from it? So I, I actually do use canola oil. I know that there, you know, there's been some talk about not using it because it's highly GMO'd in some cases, but I just buy a canola oil that is non-GMO, that's organic, and so I, I actually do use canola oil. Ah, and what I about just try corn? to make sure, I don't use corn oil, um, but I just try to make sure that I get, you know, really good quality canola oil when I buy it. Yeah, and for me, um, canola oil, and I forget the research on this, if I go back and look, um, canola oil wasn't traditionally created for, for consumption. It wasn't made for us to eat. It was made for engineering purposes, mechanics. Um, we like to run trailers or something, I have tractors or something. Um, and I, I tend to like to stay away from things that are good for machines. If they're good for machines, they're not good for my body. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then, like Fiona said, it's like uh, you know, most of the most of the canola oil you see on shelves are really poor quality. Um, and and then there are other much better quality products like um and same with vegetable oil i don't i don't typically use not typically i, I never buy vegetable oil vegetable oil canola oil and corn oil i stay away from and only use like really pure um single ingredient oils so uh what that olive oil uh the coconut oil um I use avocado oil, 
occasionally as well. Also in skincare um, as well, coconut oil, skin, all the things, olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oil I use on my body as well as um, in my food. So that's a little bit of oil. Does that answer your question here? Who asked it? And do you have other questions? Okay, okay. It's time for me to take these out and add more. I need a plate and let's think this through. One thing that I'll add, I love Google, so much information at our fingertips, is that the way, um, and this is part of the reason I lean more towards an organic non-GMO, is that the way it's processed, it's used, uh, they use hexane in processing some canola oil, so just be mindful of how the oil is processed so that it doesn't include that chemical. You want to look for more of a cold-pressed oil, if you are going to use it. Yeah, cold, cold press in all your oils. So coconut oil, cold press is better for you similarly. Are y'all seeing this? I'm gonna let this one stay a little bit longer. Your plate is a little close to the camera if you can push it back just a bit. Beautiful. Is this better? Yep. And you can see it here too. Yeah, no, not yet. I'm going to get my salsa to top. Just so y'all can see. So yeah, I did do a real chunky salsa situation here. Actually, so that I'm just, I mean, yeah, I'm going to top all three. Why not? Voila. And I'm going to get ready to take a bite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I were there with Karen too, Esther. I, I know. I have some of that right now. <laughs> I know. I wish you were here with me too. If we were in a real class together, we'd be feasting right now. This would be so yeah. dope. We will do it again soon for sure. But for now, pretend you can smell it. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, I'm going to take a bite. How's Ava doing? Ava, where are you in your process? I want to know. Wherever you are is fine. And sim mm -hmm. similarly with um, Randall. Imani. Yes, Imani. Hey, Karen, I'm spotlighting you as you get ready to take that bite, but let's see. <laughs> let's see you take that bite. <laughs> and here's the dance. <laughs> Esther, yes, mm. we, we definitely do live classes during non-COVID time. Yeah, that was the only way we taught before all of this. Okay, mm. Karen, we're all watching you eat here, okay? Nor Stop making us jealous. <laughs> I just want to tell you what I love about this dish. Um... I love the crunch, the crunch from the corn cakes, um, and then top with the salsa. The corn cakes are hot, and the salsa is cool, so you get that contrast between hot and cold. And then the cilantro is like this brightness. There's acid from the lime, and little hints of sweetness from the peaches. The peaches aren't exact; they're quite sweet. I'm gonna add, I'll probably add a little bit of honey, not too much, just a little bit of honey over top to make it a little sweeter but overall this is just really it, it tastes like summer on a plate so I'm like, and, ready. and it's ready and if um i had access to fresh corn that would be even better here when i first made this dish i was making it um in the summertime and i had fresh corn that's what inspired the dish so remember you can always do that Shoot. yeah so karen ava is ready to spotlight her Ooh, dish so i'm heading please. over to her now okay Ooh la la. Oh my you. god, that looks so good. Talking about I'm so slow. And no, that would be Mani. Mani is still good. cooking. Yeah. Okay. Ava, did you taste it yet? I want to see. No, I'm not. Okay, let me taste it now. Yes. Okay. Ava was the one, you're the one who had um, the peaches already ready. Yes. Okay. Don't look at my workstation. It's very dirty. Okay. That's it's so like, it's Yeah, it's madness. Okay. Over here. So here we go. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. 
that down. That's so good. Right? Um, I just have to tell you, um, I used the in the substitute for the egg. I made the flax egg. Oh, mm. cool. Are you vegan? So that's what I did. Yeah, with this. So it needs a little more salt. But other than yeah. that, it's really good. Like, I'm just yeah. going to put some finishing salt on it, and it'll be perfect. Actually, you know what? No, I like it like this. Because <laughs> you got the sweetness of the corn and then, like, the little salty from the salsa with the sweet from the peach. The, um, the cake is crunchy. Almost forgot to turn my other ones. It's, yeah, it's really good. Oh, so glad you like it. Honey. So good. Fantastic. I don't taste the vanilla yogurt at all. See, yeah, we got enough savory stuff in there. I don't taste it at all. It's really good. good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, hun. So glad you made it. Yeah. That's good. So good. So we cooked the, the cakes on medium high heat, Esther. Yeah. And how yeah. would you know it's done? I think it's that golden brown color that we're looking for to know that it's exactly. done. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. When it looks like that. Or like how. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, and, my, and Ava showed hers. Nice and golden. Like a pancake is what you're going oh, for. Oh, someone shared a picture. I want to see. Maria, I didn't know you were cooking with us. Amazing. Um, let's see. Maybe I can share my screen so that I can show this picture. Yeah, I want to see. Oh, this wow. Maria's. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that looks yum. All the cilantro, the peaches, the tomatoes. I can Actually, see it. I just wanted to say I had made that in advance because since you guys sent the uh, recipe, uh -huh. so I had made it because I wasn't going to be able to do it today. But I don't think I messed up on the corn cake, but I didn't add any flour, so it looks flat. So I didn't want to show that. <laughs> uh, but how, how does it taste, though? It actually tastes good, but I knew that there was something missing. So yeah. now I saw that you were, I said, let me see how you, how you make it. And mm -hmm. so I forgot when I looked at the recipe, I didn't put the flour, so it didn't look, it looks, well, it looks fuller. There, really thin. I yeah. got you. Try it, try it, try it. Yay. I'm so glad you made it though. That's fantastic. Yeah, you did mention that you made that in advance, Maria. Thank you for sharing that pic with us. Don't forget to post to... Um, at Workwell NYC, and then Karen, our beautifully fed handle is. I am beautifully fed. On I'm sharing my corn cakes too, but they don't look that great like yours. <laughs> Let me see. They don't look that great. I'm like, and then I, yeah, I shared the picture. Oh, you shared the picture. Yeah, and I said mm, this doesn't look right. <laughs> what What do you think? Let me. I'll share that as well. Let me just close out of this one. Look at all the people who are here. Oh, wow. It kind of burnt, so. Yeah, a little dark, but the, the texture looks right. Did you taste it? How is it? No, it tastes good, but it doesn't, it's not as, not like fluffy like yours. Like, but I see what I, what I didn't put in there. It's the flour. It's the, got it. Mm -hmm. That's why. That'll do it. So next time, will you make it again? Oh, no, definitely. The PA. Uh, yeah, definitely. So uh, I'm going to do it again because I'm going to put the flour in and I'm pretty sure it's going to taste even better. So I'll yeah. send you another picture. <laughs> yeah, send, send another picture. We want, we want to see an improvement on that one, for sure. But thank you. Thanks for trying. And I'm glad it's still, and see, it's still edible. Even your mistakes are, are, are really great here because you can eat them. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't despair, okay? Make them into something else, yeah. Like Imani changed her, she used her um, slightly burnt strawberries in a vinaigrette, yeah. and she mm -hmm. loved it. So yeah, purpose. This was so much fun. I'm so glad I that know. you all joined us this evening and cooked with us, and even prepped in advance. That was that was amazing. That's brilliant. So glad you all can do that and thought to do that. Thank you, everybody. Well, so thank, thank you. you. We can cheers. If you all have a glass, we invite you to raise your glasses with us. And here's to being beautifully fed. <laughs>